I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we have a familiar face back. If you've paid attention in the past, this is Sam from RetroTech. Sam is building scientist, and he's the guy that you see with the door the most out of anybody that works for, for <laughs> you guys. Uh, and we are in Bellingham, Washington, and we were here because this is close to your guys' home office, and we're here to actually talk about the uh, DM32 X. Okay, yeah. I had to make sure that I was getting it right. Uh, <laughs> But we wanted to talk about the blower door. So first, go back and watch my conversation with Forrest of Chuck and Nut Builders uh, and follow them on Instagram as well. The house was uh, finished in 2016 and we thought, let's find a house to retest and we can play with the new gauge. And I haven't really got to poke on it much yet. Sam will poke on it a little bit. Uh, but the house is about 3,500 square feet. The house was built uh, six years ago. There's about 10 feet of volume downstairs once you count the floor assembly and nine feet up here, uh, nine and a half feet up here. And so we have a, a volume of 66,000 cubic feet. Yeah. 66,650 cubic feet, I think is what we actually calculated that. In the old days, I was telling Sam this, my first blower door, it actually didn't interface with the Mac computers that our office runs on. And I'm too lazy to do the workaround, which when you hear what I'm about to say, actually doesn't make that much sense because I took the manual for the blower door, flipped it over and wrote the math out on what I had to do to calculate ACH 50 each time. Um, and that three or four minutes worth of math that I had to do every single time, just to double check it a couple times, is kind of greatly surpassed by what we have here. So the, the system works with the same fans. Yep. Uh, so you can just swap a manometer like you've been able to in the past. Mm -hmm. Same things, we can port to the outside, we can read from the inside, we have data communication between the two. But this whole interface looks different. Yeah. Tell me, give me the, give me the sales pitch for this, this manometer. Sure, so it's built on an Android platform. So if I press this middle button here, this takes me home. So I have an app to launch the gauge. Um, if you're familiar with our automated testing app, rCloud, uh, mm -hmm. You no longer have to pair a phone with a gauge; it's just built in. Okay, so, so I'm not. I don't have to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connect right. to the to be able to control it from my phone. Wanna, I can just. If you want to generate a report, boom! You can just do it right on the gauge, and it saves it for you. You can access it at any time. Okay, so if I'm doing four of these a day, and I don't have, I want, I don't want to have to move back and forth between devices. Everything's here, and at the end of the day, I can export. Exactly. Or, as you were saying earlier, we do test in, test out on retrofits. Mm -hmm this guy will save that. Yep. So I can test in and it can be saved under that job. And then Go six weeks later when we're done, we can run it again and then both sets of data are there. Yep. Okay. Um, you do have the ability if you wanted to uh, go ahead and use the geolocation and everything, such as if you're testing in cold weather or at a high elevation, you can tether it with your phone via Wi-Fi if you want to, and then it can go ahead and pull all that information automatically. And the, the, the good thing there is it pulls it in there and then this guy makes adjustments, Yep. right? It, it needs to know if we're at a high altitude that, that some of this gets funky. Yeah, to make those with, corrections. Without making a correction here. Exactly. And so now I, have, I don't have to deal with that. I'm at 700 feet above <laughs> sea level. <laughs> and I don't blow it or test on super cold days because people get complaining if you cool their, <laughs> cool their house off. Okay. And then I, there's more apps here though. Yeah, there's one more. It's called the resources app. So uh, if you... Don't do your testing often, or if you're new to it, uh, the manual for the blower door is actually built in here. This is a, a high resolution OLED display, so it's super clear. You can read text on there really easily. Um, the quick guides that you're used to getting from us, that's a laminated piece of paper. Uh -huh. That's just built into the screen. Um, also, there's videos built into it. To so show if you, you watch how to do Sam's it. Tech Tuesday videos, <laughs> they're all here now. It's built into the gauge. Um, you don't need internet to run the basic ones, how to set up a house, how to set up your equipment, how to get the reading you need. However, if you are connected to the internet with it, you can access a much larger library of information there. Which is kind of genius. You know, a few years ago, Construction Instruction had an app that you could download on anybody on site's smartphone, and it had details on how to install stuff. And it's like, yeah. yeah, I know we can go to YouTube and look it up, or we could go to RetroTech's website and look it up, but if it's at hand and easy to come by, it's gonna be way easier to just go, all right, this is what we're doing now. Watch for two minutes. Everybody yeah. get a soda for a second and this is what we're doing. So if you have someone new in the field, they can just let the gauge teach them what to do. They don't have to call back into the office and what button do I hit again? They can just, yeah. you just follow the guidelines right there on the gauge. 
Okay. Uh, okay, so then we're going to run a test. Yeah. So we'll so, launch the gauge here. And there it is. It's a familiar screen, um, kind of like what we've seen before with the DM32. Yep. Just a, a little dressed up. Um, there's a few more options here. So if I wanted to start the test, I can just hit set pressure. And then I've got some hotkeys over to the side, so I don't have to enter it into the keypad. You know, we do 25 pascals for duct testing, uh, 50 for residential blower doors, 75 for commercial. So we have all three of those to the side. So we can just hit 50 and it and cranks up the fan. So just like the DM32 uh, or any other smart manometer, it's gonna work until it finds that 50 point and that's negative 50 pascals of pressure. We're depressurizing right. the house. Uh, and then it's gonna give us a CFM, but we're, uh, we're not super nerdy passive house people. We don't want CFM, we just want ACH50. How do I get to ACH50? So I can just tap on my reading for channel B. And usually you can scroll down and find it, but we have this option to make favorites. So okay. I can just favorite ACH and it's always gonna be at the top. So I can just hit that. And now my reading will be shown there on channel B. So 0.55. Yeah. Yeah. And which is solid. That's a really good. That's an awesome number. Passive house level yeah. of, of quality. That's the first time I've touched it and I figured out how to turn it off on my own. That means <laughs> it's idiot proof. The red stop button. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like the idea that it plays with the R Cloud app real well. Like, especially if you're doing some high-level testing where you're doing record keeping and certification and things like that. That's a like workflow. Just gets easier. If it's one less thing that you have to fiddle with, you know, sure. it's one less app you have to have open on your phone or whatever. Right. Uh, I like the fact that it connects that you can that you can pair it to the phone and get all that geolocation and weather data and all those sorts of things. Uh, I think this is a, uh, a really interesting piece of technology. It's nice to see that a manometer is catching up to the smartphone style that sure. everybody operates now. Um, we can also, we can actually see what we just did here. If we go to the graph, there's our channel B display. I can adjust that time frame. I can take a screenshot, I can record it. So if I'm doing any air sealing while the blower door is running, I can actually watch it drop in real time to see what that air sealing did. Yeah, so we were making that, we were having that conversation earlier. If you were, let's say we're, we're gonna run the door and we have 16 can lights, we could go and seal one can light and see what it does. And then we could make a real clear argument about whether or not that thing was important, whether or not we wanted to keep putting in the effort to air seal it. Right. You know, in real time, we could have that thing tethered to a phone and a guy standing in the attic foaming it off by himself and going, okay took five minutes and it cut it down by a few CFM. Let's just do the rest of them while we're up here. I mean, we're gonna make an argument that you should do the rest of them anyway, but. Um, okay, real quick, this this fan is not out yet. Correct. This is the 7000? Yeah, this is the model 7000. Okay. Um, the biggest thing is it's a, it's a heck of a lot lighter. Um, your traditional blower door fan is gonna be 36, 37 pounds. This one I think clocks in around 21, 22 pounds. Yeah. So we've got a new DC motor that we're able to use now that's a lot more powerful and a lot more efficient and a lot lighter. Which the, you know, the motor on it, it appears to be half the size and it appears to be half the weight when you pick it up. Yeah. It really does uh, make a difference. And I can see if I'm running tests all day, every day, this thing in and out of the back of my truck all day, I can load this with one hand. The other one's kind of a pain in the rear to try to get in my truck. Yeah. Uh, with one hand. But so. the other cool thing about this too is since that motor is so efficient, we can run it off a battery now. So if you see this thing here, this is, on this one you have the option you have to, you can run it off a power supply, which is what we have here, it's plugged into the wall, or you can run it off a battery, and the battery looks just like this, it's identical to it. So yeah, you can now run your blower door tests off a battery, you don't have to have a power source to do it, you can just bring your own. Yep, which when we got here and Sam was starting to set the door up, I saw him looking around and I was like, the plug's over there. I had already, so many times, I've been like, guys, do I, did we forget to bring an extension cord? We're not gonna be able to do a blower door test now. Uh, the fact that it can run off a battery. And uh, Ben, the, uh, do we call him technical director, co-CEO? <laughs> co-CEO, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was telling me last night at dinner that it's basically an e-bike battery that you guys have figured yeah. out how to make work with your equipment, which is like, okay, so it's a reliable, proven battery from another market. That makes sense. Why develop new battery technology? So, like with that high power and the lightweight, we kind of had to factor in some safety things there too. So, what if the fan's just sitting there and it automatically gets cut on? So now we built in. There's an accelerometer built into the fan top. So if it falls over, it's going to shut off. Okay. So, very interesting stuff. I think the blower door needs more attention 
in our industry. That's why I decided to come and hang out with these guys for this release. Uh, we got to say thanks to Forrest from Chuck and Nut. He's standing over there uh, for letting us back into the house, the homeowners as well. Uh, this is an amazing house and uh, we're six years in and they're still below Passive House. I think that's a, a round of applause. Give those guys a follow on Instagram. Give RetroTech a follow on Instagram. And uh, till next time, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. There are like 12 new videos a week. If you don't subscribe, you're gonna miss some of that content. I miss some of it when I don't read the email because I can't possibly keep up with all of it. There's so much of it. And I'm learning from all the other people on the Build Show Network every week too. So I'm really happy that they let me be involved. Follow me on Instagram too. It's Jake.Bruton. Thanks for watching.